हरि ओम एवरीबॉडी वेलकम बैक लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड ओ सह नौ भुन सह वेद्यंकर वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओम शुक्लाधरम विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्न वदनम ध्यानोपात वागीशाद्या सुमन सह सर्वाताक्रमे यम नृतकृत्यु तम नमा गजानन वक्रतुंड महाकाय कोटिसूर्य सभा निर्विघ्न कुर मे देव सर्व्यु सर्वदा सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभ क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा ब्रह्मानंद परम सुखद केवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्वस्यादिलक्ष्यम एक विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गु तम नमा सद्गु तम नमा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्दशंकोकशंक शंक शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवन पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमवत व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त नम गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुर साक्षात्म ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गुर ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर यधिमात्रेण सर्वे शिष्या सेवकाम क्षेत्रे प्रवर्तंते चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम चिन्मय तम नमाम्यहम हरिओम एवरीबाडी वेलकम बैक एज यू नो वी स्पेंट अ फ्यू वीक्स on the topic of maya shakti we understood how it has the power to make the impossible possible aghatita ghatana samarthyam how does it do it it veils the distinction between the seer and the seen within and brahma sarga yoho distinction between reality and creation outside so because of this confusion so because of this confusion or delusion we are in this samsara 
So with the practice of Shravana, Manana and Nididhyasana, and when the veiling is destroyed, the differences become clear. At the micro level, what happens? The Jiva Bhava goes away. And at the macro level, Sarga Brahmanoscha Vedam, the distinction between the creation and the reality goes away. So then we understood that every entity in this world has five aspects. Amsha Panchakam. Out of the five, Asti, Bhati, Priyam, they are Brahma Rupam. They belong to Brahman. Since there was a lot of discussion on this topic last week, I'm trying to recap a little bit more. Asti is what? Asti is, it exists. That easiness aspect of a thing or a being, meaning this pen is or this phone is, etc. Existence aspect of it. Then there is bhati. Although it means shining, means it becomes a object of knowledge or it becomes knowable. Because it is illumined by our consciousness, it becomes knowable. Then there is Priyam, dearness, meaning it can make me happy for a while. Asti, Bhati, Priyam. Now, what are the other two in Amsha Panchakam? Nama and Rupa. Name and form. And they belong to Jagat. They belong to the world. They keep on changing. So what is the problem? Why are we studying all this? So, because of this, we are after the objects of the world externally to eke out that momentary happiness that these objects give. But we know from our study of the text called Bajagovindam, in that class, we learned, what did we learn? Pratipaksha Bhavana. To see the defects in this objects of the world. After a reflection over a period of time, I learned to understand that Everything in this world is temporary. Like we say, this too shall pass. It has a beginning and an end, Adi and Ananta. It drains my energy in pursuing to acquire them, acquiring them, then protecting them, so on and so forth. And at the end, what happens? It leaves me with a sense of pain. Or we say, Dissatisfaction is guaranteed at the end. So what is real? So what is unreal? So this type of inquiry helps us to realize there is only one reality. That asti, bhati, priyam are one. Nama Rupa, name, name and form, are mitya, appearance only. Like we say, Namkavas. Therefore, upon deeper inquiry, we can say oneness alone is appearing as many. This is the highest level of Advaita. That alone I am. So last week we saw in shloka number 21 to help us understand that unity in diversity. 
Let us chant that shloka again, those of you who are following in the text along. Pavai Vagnir Jalor Vishu Devatir Yagna Radishu Abhinna Satchidananda Vidyate Rupana Mani Just to recap, the commonality in Ka, Kam Brahma, that is the space, Vayu is air, Agni is fire, Jala is water, Urvishu, that earth, Deva, Tiryak, Nara, Adishu, meaning gods, animals, man, and so on. Abhinnaha, what is that? What is the common factor? He says, Satchit Ananda. Existence, consciousness, and bliss aspect is common. So, what is the difference? Vidyate, what is the difference? Rupa Namani, name and form. So, hope it is clear to you by now. The names and products, names and forms, are a product of maya, existence, consciousness, and bliss is common to all. So we can conclude that way. And last week, I also explained through the reference shloka of Viveka Chudamani, why this human birth for us is rare? What differentiates us from other things in creation? If you have missed that class for any reason, please revisit last week's lecture on the YouTube. It is important to have that good understanding of our baseline. Because as human beings alone, we are bestowed with this rare capacity of Purushartha or free will. And because of that, we need to steer our intellect in the right direction. Not just to distinguish between right from wrong on a moral plane. That is very, very mundane. That is very fundamental. But to go deeper and to, and to inquire what is real, what is permanent. All this for an appropriate level of expression of life. So, by the way, thanks to all of your comments on this topic last week's lecture. Many of you sent me private comments. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying. So, what is our key takeaway until this point? That I am of the nature of Sakshi. We have established through the logic of Druk, Drushya, Viveka that Sakshi is of the nature of Sat, Chit, Ananda, Swarupa. Brahman is the nature of Sat, Chit, Ananda, Swarupa. Therefore, I am of the nature of that Brahman, Aham, Brahma, Asmi. That's how we arrive logically, you know. And you, I do not know, at this moment, I, it may feel different because of avidya, because of the effects of maya, which creates three types of problems for us. What are they? I don't know what my true nature is. I think I'm the body. I think I'm the mind. I think I'm the intellect and so on. I don't know. Even if someone comes and tells me through the study of Vedanta, I say, I don't understand all this. Or then we say, I have no experience of this Atma or Brahma. I don't know, I can't understand, and 
I have no experience. These are the three types of problems. And how are they addressed? They can be addressed by three types of sadhana practices. So last week we saw, I don't know, can be resolved through shravanam. By listening to a spiritual master, directly or indirectly. Active listening, our Puja Gurudev said. Subtle mind and intellect are all aligned to the teachings. Subtle intellect and mind. Sukshma buddhi. Because it needs to be caught. It cannot be taught. I don't understand can be cured by mananam. Reflection. Reflecting on what I have heard and internalizing it. Very important. Then I have no experience, we say. That is cured by Nididhyasanam. Contemplation on what we have reflected. When I use the term from Jnana, Jnana is doubt-free intellectual knowledge. Jnana to Vijnana. To indicate an actual experience. So this brought us to the topic of what? Meditation. In verse number 22, let's chant that. Upekshya nama rupe dve Satchidananda tatparaha Upekshya nama rupe dve Satchidananda tatparaha Samadhim sarvada kuryat Rudaye Vathava Bahihi. So, what do I meditate on? A lot of people think it is just sitting somewhere and staring blank into the ceiling or whatever. So, I meditate on that Sakshi Swarupa. When my eyes are closed, when my eyes are open, when my eyes are closed, I meditate on my true nature, that Sakshi. He gave us guidelines on that. Then when my eyes are open and I'm engaged with the world, I meditate on that Brahma Swarupa. You see, nothing but Brahman. So giving that mind, keeping it steady, steady in this knowledge, Nitaram. I have already used this term, sajatiya vritti pravaha. You flood the mind, giving it the same thought about Brahman. Sada Brahma chintanam. He says, samadhim sarvada kuryat, prudayeva athava bahi. Sarvada, always. Remember that definition our Puja Guruji gave us that I shared with you all last week. Effortless awareness. So all of these sadhanas, when we do, where does the change needs to happen? The answer to that question reveals the importance of Samadhi. When the eyes are closed, sitting in meditation, I meditate on my true nature. That Sakshi Swarupa I am. I have given some pointers in our previous classes. We did some exclusive sessions on that. Krudayeva Athava Bahihi. When the eyes are open, meditating on that Brahman, that Adhisthana, 
that substratum meditating on that Brahmasvarupa, withdrawing the attention from the names and forms. So what does this do? Slowly, over a period of time, at the subtle level, from Vishaya Karavritti, from an object based uh, 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 thoughts, I am replacing that with Brahma Karavritti, Akhanda Karavritti. These thoughts, I am giving it to my subtle mind and intellect. Actually, we studied that. If you recall, in Atma Bodha, what did Bhagavan Shankaracharya ji say? In that, he said, Evam nirantarabhyastha brahmai vasmiti vasana Haratya vidya vikshepan roga nivarasayanam nirantara abhyasa. By constant practice, continuous contemplation that I am. Aham Brahma Asmi, I am Brahman. Nirgunaha Aham Asmi. Asangaha Aham Asmi. Kevalaha Aham Asmi. Nityaha Aham Asmi. Nirmalaha Aham Asmi. Shantaha Ahamasmi. These are all pointers of Atma Lakshana. By that kind of practice, what does this do? Over a period of time, it destroys the ignorance and the other agitations in my mind. Then we saw a famous quote in the fourth quarter of that. Uh, verse that I just chanted, Roga Naiva Rasayanam. Bhagavan, in Atma Bodha, he said, most of you in this class are medical doctors. Right? Just like when we give medicine, what it does, it seeps into the bloodstream to cure the disease. Same way, this Nididhyasana this constant contemplation, this Brahma Chintanam gets rid of this chronic disease called ignorance. So how long one should meditate? Remember our Puja Gurudev school. You are in that Chintanam. That is why when our Puja Guruji says meditation is not a verb, not an action, just be. That is effortless awareness. See in our corporate lingo, what do we say? You say, you convince them with your brilliance. You baffle them with your brilliance or confuse them with your... I'm not going to see, say that in the... I just say dot, dot, dot. Something like that, right? Now some technical terms will come in the next two verses. Two, three verses. So don't get intimidated by that. I'll try to simplify it because it's a little more advanced text. Now the classification of different kinds of samadhi is mentioned. Chanting number, shloka number 23. Let's chant that. 
சவிகல்பு நிர்விகல்ப சவிகல்பு நிர்விகல்ப சமாதிர்விதோதி சமாதிர்விதோதி ுவிதேன சவிகல்பனர்விதோ நிர்விகல்ப சமாதிர்விதோதி So this practice of meditation is of two types. Savikalpo nirvikalpaha samadhir dvivido hrudi. So this meditation within is dvividaha. of two types one is savikalpa samadhi second one is nirvikalpa samadhi you have heard of these terms i'm sure vikalpa means duality modification savika sa vikalpa means the one with duality i hope it is clear that is savikalpa samadhi nirvikalpa means without division without duality see in the saguna sakara upasana when we are worshiping the lord with the form i had explained it at that time i maintain that division or dis i must say distinction that i am the worshiper and the lord is being worshiped hope that is clear that distinction that is maintaining that separation so in the savikalpa samadhi i have explained this before also but just to recap we have this what is called as triad triputi meaning pay attention to this meaning there is my object of meditation dhyaya i am the meditator dhyatru and there is a process of meditation called dhyana three put these are three put together just joking that way so to simplify in savikalpa samadhi the meditator or the limited jiva there is the object of meditation and that is nirguna nirakara or attributeless brahman so in the duality in the process of meditation exists this is savikalpa samadhi once the duality disappears the triputi is gone self alone remains this culminates into nirvikalpa samadhi i'll give you a very simple example to understand this let's take the case of our deep sleep what do we say every night i say i am very very tired i am very very sleepy what do i do prepare my bed that is the effort i want to sleep as long as the thought exists that i want to sleep i am sleepy as long as that exists am i asleep obviously not but i do not know when that thought has disappeared 
I was overpowered by sleep. We say, what do we say? I fell asleep. Or when we wake up, I say, I don't know what happened last night. I slept like a log of wood. Very commonly people say that, right? So for some of us, I'm talking about myself, we are all deep sleepers. You know, that is a blessing. Because a lot of people cannot fall asleep without taking some tablets or any other external aids and so on. I say, this is my closest out-of-body experience every night. Once I hit the sack, I am gone. Now, I hope you understood what is Savikalpa, what is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Now, in the second line of the shloka, he says, Drushya Shabdhanu Vidhena Savikalpaha Punar Dvidha. He further classifies the Savikalpa meaning there are two types of Samadhi Savikalpa Samadhi, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, and in that, he is classifying the Savikalpa Samadhi into two more divisions, Drushyanu Vidhena, Shabdanu Vidhena, Savikalpa. Meaning meditation with duality into Drushya Shabdhanu Vidhena, with the duality. Shabdanu Viddena means associated with words. Drushyanu Viddena means associated with theme. So in order to explain this, we need to study verse number 24 and 25. So we will cover at least one today so that it is not overwhelming. Let us chant shloka number 24 which talks about drushyanu viddena samadhi kamadya chitta ga drushyat sakshitvena chetanam dhyaye drushyanu viddoyam samadhi savikalpakah Sakshitvena Chetanam. Kamadhyaha. Like these desires, these thoughts are arising where? Chittagaha. In my mind. See, if you go back to shloka number four, when we had to go one behind the other, when we had to go from Rupam, Drushyam, Lochanam, Druka to mind and to go beyond the mind, how he pointed out the destination, Sakshi. And what did we say in that? Number four shloka, Kama Sankalpa Sandehau Shraddha Shraddhe Druti Tare Rir dhir bhir vityeva madin bhasa yatye kada chitihi. See, if you pay attention, the thoughts, where are they arising? They are arising in my mind. They are drushya, they are seen. What would we meditate on? Sakshitvena Chetanam, on that Sakshi, on that witness of all my thoughts, on that Chaitanya Swarupa. This type of meditation with the duality 
is called drushya anuvidya savikalpa samadhi. So in the mind, let me explain this a little differently. In the mind, there are many thoughts that arise. These thoughts, they appear, then they get dissolved or they disappear. And unless we give importance to it, so who is the witness to all these thoughts in my mind that are appearing and disappearing? Bhagavan Ramana Maharshi in Upadesha Sara, we studied that aspect of it. Drushya Varitam Chitta Matmanaha Chitva Darshanam Tattva Darshanam and we inquired further. Manasam to Kim Margane Krute Naiva Manasam Marga Arjavat. See, in this type of meditation, our Puja Gurudev used the term thought parade. See, if you have been to back home in India, if you have gone to Republic Day Parade or Independence Day Parade, these thoughts and desires, they are like the soldiers parading or marching. And the intellect is the commanding officer. Just taking the salute without identifying with any of the soldiers parading in front of him or her. Just witnessing. It is going. By this process, over a period of time, what happens in the mind? The agitations will subside. Remember this. This is your key takeaway today. Thought. It starts with a bit. It becomes an A bit before it becomes a habit. We say, watch your thoughts as they become your words. Watch your words. As they become your actions. Watch your actions. As they go on to become our habits. Watch your habits, they say, as they shape up to make our character. Watch your character as it becomes your destiny. our destiny. Then we know from Vedanta the law of karma kicks in. Our destiny determines what type of body we get to exhaust our vasanas. We need to be grateful that we have gotten this human birth, this Nara Janma to think this way. Actually, I would like to stop here and we will continue on this topic of Samadhi next week. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinah Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makasiddukka Bhag Bhavet Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrutyorma Amrutam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Om Purnamada Purnamidam 
पूर्ण आत् पूर्ण मुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम तत्सत with that i'll uh, open it up for uh, our uh, q and a session please stay 